Hi, I'm Kelly at Book and Paper Arts, and today I want to talk about an easy, no-fail technique for working in an illustrated journal. A lot of times when I post videos about illustrated journal keeping, I read the same comment over and over. And that is something like, I would love to keep an illustrated journal, I'd love to make a visual diary, but I can't draw. I can't paint. Well, one, you are mistaken. But that is a different uh, pep talk and a different video. Instead, let's go to number two, which is that you don't have to be able to draw and sketch and paint to make illustrated journal pages. Instead, all you really need are found papers and a glue stick. When I say found papers, I mean just that. The bibs and bobs of paper and card and whatnot that you find in your everyday life. They are usually free and they are easy to find no matter where you live. You just have to teach yourself to look for them. So today I'm going to talk about that how you, what they are, how you can find them, and then some techniques for how to use them to make compelling, fun, interesting pages and get your memories in the book. If you like journal arts, if you like altered books, vintage books, paper, and other ephemera, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and be sure and turn on the notifications and you will have more of them in your life. Now let's go make some pages. I have been AWOL on YouTube for a few weeks because I was in France, and while there I had rubbish Wi-Fi. It was, I had so little bandwidth that there was no way I could uh, upload videos to YouTube, and in the long run that was actually very okay because it gave me more time to enjoy my days and certainly more time to work in my travel diary. Now my pages, I'm home now, I'm back in Wales, my pages are very incomplete and that's okay because I've made some notes and I can now go in, like I just scribbled some little notes, now I can go in and add um, some more drawing after the fact and add my words and stories. I can also add some of these found papers. I have acquired quite a stash. And one of the secrets to keeping a travel diary or an illustrated journal is that you don't have to do it all on the spot. You can, as I said, take little notes, come back with a stash, some photographs, and work on it at your coffee table or where you will as you go. Let's look at some of the found papers that I have here that I'm going to try to turn into some journal pages. Now, granted, these found papers are French, and they have a little bit of ooh-la-la. -la. But you don't have to have French papers to make your visual diary. No matter where you live, you're going to find similar papers. I'm going to go through and show what some of these are. And if you start looking, you're going to find them wherever you live. And more importantly, they will be uh, pertaining to the memories that you have in your everyday life. Because we can't always be out and away. And besides, our everyday life is the most important journey. Let's see what I got here. I have tons of free brochures. And I may use these images, or I may just use them for found text. Cut them out and do some pasting of these words. Make a little bit of uh, fun stuff. Here's a program from a show. Um, this is actually not from France. It's my one of my tax bills. But it's got a little... Uh, cellophane window here and I'm going to make that into a pocket where you can see what's in there. 
It doesn't get more found papery than a tax bill. Uh, this is from the side of a box of strawberries. More free brochures, brochures. Let's see. These are some bags that uh, fruits and vegetables came in. And so it's well used, which makes it an even better memory. These uh, receipt things I found in, there was a stack of them in the ATM. And I do love me some receipts and stuff. So those, those will be added to a background. Uh, some bread, some baguettes came in here. Again, some nice little words. So just some bags with advertising. This is an, uh, a flyer for a, a book show. This is a free magazine that came from the supermarket with a lot of recipes and images and whatnot. So now I'm going to go through these and make a little bit of order and show some ideas for using them in a page. Before I start working with and in these papers, I just want to add that it doesn't have to be a food wrapper or a brochure. It can be any piece of paper or cardboard that comes through your 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 little hands in your life every day. It could be an old magazine that you were about to recycle or maybe a greeting card or birthday card. It could even be something as seemingly mundane as a flyer for a yard sale that you get at the grocery store. The thing is you want to teach yourself, train yourself to see these ordinary, sometimes boring pieces of paper and look for words that you can use or images that are actually visually interesting. Maybe you just didn't see it before. That's the name of the game. For instance, here is that free food magazine. Now, a lot of it doesn't really pertain to what I was doing in on this trip, but I did look at every page, and this one actually says in French that I love, love, love vegetables. Well, me too. I'm vegetarian, and I love, love, love vegetables. So even though... This magazine has a lot of different recipes that don't pretend uh, pertain to my everyday life and memories. I can take this fragment and start a page with it about some of the foods that I did make and eat on this trip that were part of my memories. So I'm just going to put that aside. Here is a little thing that a tea bag came in. Could it be more easy to find? But again, making cups of tea and having them with my friends, that was a nice memory. So I'm going to add that to the, the, the pages. Now look at this. This is one of the bags that some pastries came in. And I actually think... It's quite pretty. It's got a very subtle pattern here. I don't know if that's picking up or not, but we'll see. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to rough tear a nice segment that I can use on a page for a background. This is uh, not the sexiest meal I had while we were away. It was uh, some microwave soup, but it was a good day. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cut this out.
and use it as part of a page. When I add my words to it, it will be fun. I think I'm going to cut this one out, and that's also what I'm going to do here. This is part of that baguette bag. Instead of rough tearing it, I'm going to go ahead and cut because this has got a nice boxy shape. And while it is describing a baguette, a traditional baguette, tradition, I'm not going to be writing about a baguette. Instead, I'm just going to use this tradition, tradition française, and I'm going to make that part of a page to then write about some of my found traditions and fun things that I like to do. So I'm just going to use this as a kind of a jump starting a page with a completely different idea. This one, I think, again, is very hard to see, but it's talking about eating. Um, it's got the days of the week here. And so I'm definitely going to be taking out the days of the week and making those part of a page. Ah, this is one of those free brochures. It says the mystery of the rocks. Now, I spend a lot of time in my sketchbook working in old Romanesque churches where the masonry and the, the stonework is a huge part of my travels and my memories. So I'm just going to take these words, not the part about the fortress I didn't go to yet. I'm just going to take these words, the mystery of the rocks, le mystère de Pierre, and make that the start of a page about one of the churches that I visited. So you can see what I'm doing is just teaching myself to see these ordinary pieces, see them in a different context that I can add to start my pages. Here are some of the ways that I'm gonna use some of the pieces to give you some ideas. I am going to be adding some more words or drawing here, but I'd like to fill this space up a little bit. So I've rough torn a corner of this uh, pastry bag. And it has the, uh, I don't know, the, the texture, the, the thickness of a, a little bit thicker than a tissue paper, more of a tracing paper thickness. And that means that when I glue it down, it's going to go uh, transparent. The paper is, and what's going to be left are these words that just pop, is almost as if they're, as if I've uh, written everything. And it's also letting my drawing show through down here. So now I can go back and uh, if I want to, I can write some text over this or if I get distracted, I can just leave it like that because it looks pretty cool. Huh. This is from some cut flowers and I just cut that out of the, the bag. So I think I'm going to add that for a little bit of interest. With my glue stick here. Let's put that there. There, there, there. Okay, that page is coming along. Let's see. Okay, over here I started a drawing of a building. I still have some work to do on that, but again, I've got a little space here. And this is from a baguette bag. It says the essentials. So I'm going to add my glue stick to this and just fill up that space there. The, the colors go with the color of the wood in the drawing I'm making and it fills up that space. So now my page is starting to look nice and abundant and fun. Here I 
have drawn some columns and capitals in churches in an old abbey. And I did, I took that fragment that says the mystery of the rocks and I've just glued it on the side there for some interest to fill up the page. I've already got some yellow going on on this page. So even though this isn't the same day where I had tea, I'm gonna add the yellow tea bag because I can, it's my page. Just gonna put that there. Let's see. Here I added, uh, this was from a flyer for a, a book show, and it says, in French it says, um, the times of the book, or, or the times of the reading. And um, I like to read, and I read a couple of books while I was on uh, this trip, so I'm going to add those here, write about them a little bit. Now, this is eventually going to be a drawing of a bowl of white beans because that was a, a super traditional kind of a peasant meal that we had one day, and it was delicious. Just a big old pot of white beans. And um, these are some flowers. It's Lily of the Valley, and they uh, it's called Miguel, and Miguel is very much a symbol of May in France. So I thought that this little thing here that says tradition uh, Francaise would be good because I've got some traditional white beans to write about and some traditional Miguel to write about. So that'll be a nice label for this page. And it's wrinkling and I don't care. So. Uh, here I put down my my box of soup, and this, when I glued it down, got a little bit more dramatic, and now I can see that it, the days of the weeks are, are popping here, and that's going to be a fun little addition. Here is the tax bill that I rough tore the edge off of, and now I've made a little pocket here. And in the pocket, I actually have some of that Miguel, that Lily of the Valley, that I dry, pressed and dried. And now I'm gonna put it in here. Maybe it'd be better like this. And that will protect the flowers a little bit and still let me see them. And it's kind of fun and different. I'm gonna have to get rid of that. So I might trim that later, or I might just leave it and let the book book be chunky and 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 fun. Here's that fragment of a bag that had a pretty pattern on it, and I've just rough torn up a, a hunk, and I am going to glue that down on this facing page. Because I like the way that the colors, this this tea parchment color picks up the, the colors in the, the, the leaves that are turning brown and contrasts with the brown in the envelope. And so you can see now more of the pattern because it's it's gone a little bit translucent. Now I'm going to add a little bit of uh, embellishment to pull some of these uh, mix and match elements together. You can use whatever you have, crayons, pastels, pencils, uh, pen, it doesn't matter. I am going to make a border here though with this um, water soluble stick by Derwent. I love water solubles. And I'm just very roughly 
adding a little border there. This is a Chunky XL stick by Derwent. And I'm just going to, because it's water soluble, I can add a little uh, water here on my brush and pull that color right out. And it's just a little, add a little bit of interest to the page. And it's similar in colors to the colors in this fragment and also to some of the the painting of the stonework that I've been starting over here. So just with that little bit of extra, I've now added I'm going to be writing some text over this, but it will add some interest and texture and depth to the page. I'm also going to pull up some color. I'm putting my wet brush on top of the stick, and now I'm just going to add some splotches. Ta-da! And that's going to dry and, again, just make some interest, some splotchy interest. Now I'm just going to take a black pen and add a box. Make a border around these some of these elements. There's the tea bag. There's my handwritten notes so that I can remember what I want to write about. I'm just going to pull this box border all the way across both pages. So it's linking the pages up a little bit, adding some definition and interest. And now when I get ready to add my words, they're going to go here and it's going to just make the page uh, a little bit more uh, sound. I also have a yellow, kind of a marigold pastel here. And I think I'm going to do something similar, but going in this direction. Make a little box there. Pick up those yellow colors. And then I can add some text here as well. Uh, here I'm going to add a... You know what? I'm not going to add a box here. I am going to add a box here. And again, I've got this green. It's water soluble, but I'm not going to activate it. I'm just going to use it as a, a green color thingy. So I'm putting a box like this. It's going to go around. And again, now when I add my text in here, it's just going to hold together like a different kind of page and pick up these colors. Finally, I took some cool tea and put it in an eyedropper, just some tea, and I'm adding some splotches there. And I'm going to just close that and open it. And now that's going to dry darker. And I like the way that those caramel colors are just going to pick up all the colors on both pages. And I can add my text when it's dry. I'm not going to add my words today. This video is long enough. And I've got unpacking to do. What I will do is off camera, add some text. And then I'm going to do a flip through of this travel journal in a few days. And you can see what the finished pages look like. If you want to see those finished pages, be sure and subscribe to this channel and turn on the notifications and you'll get a post when it goes up. I also have an online class about keeping illustrated journals. It uh, is for absolute beginners and it's also for people with some experience who just want some ideas, maybe some inspiration. So please check out that online class in the text below this video. Join me in a few days because I am also going to have 
and uh, what's new in the studio video, and it is going to be epic. If you have any questions or feedback, please let me know in the comments. I love to compare notes. Until later, get up and go make something.